So we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Aloni, and I'm with Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 70 newspapers, magazines, websites, webinars, podcasts, and events throughout Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, Westchester, Long Island, and Philadelphia. Today, we're thrilled to be able to bring you the webinar about thinking about selling your business. And if you have a business, you'll come to the point when you're going to think about your exit strategy. And today we have an expert who's devoted his work to helping business owners develop and implement a successful exit strategy. Let me introduce you to Mark Kravitz. Mark is the managing partner and founder of Align Wealth. Mark offers financial solutions with a decidedly human touch. He brings a consummate investment acumen to the full range of clients' challenges, supplemented by considerable insight in exit strategy. His knowledge of financial investment and exit planning has helped clients through difficult economic and market cycles. Mark holds a certified financial planner designation, as well as a certified investment management analyst designation from the Wharton School of Business. He specializes in exit planning and achieved the prestigious accreditation of Certified Exit Planning Advisor from the University of Chicago's Booth Business School. He's a founding member and president of the New York chapter of the Exit Planning Institute. He's helped over 100 business owners, families, and individuals get ready for and go into their own exits. We're lucky to have such a professional with us. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, great to be here. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So Mark, you've helped so many business owners exit their business successfully. And before we get started, I want to know what drives you? You know, what is your why for what you do? Well, um, good question. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, my, my why is my dad. Um, my dad, similar to a lot of uh, uh, Americans now, came from another country, Poland, and then he went to Cuba, and then came to the United States and really came with uh, with nothing. And um, he came to uh, New York as a uh, late teenager and he worked uh, his way up over a period of time in the garment industry. And eventually he started his own business. And uh, he had about 10, 12 people that had uh, worked for him and was doing was doing pretty well. Uh, but unfortunately, there was no exit planners in that industry. There was no one to tell them, hey, listen, the industry is changing. Things are changing. That whole industry is going towards China and that maybe he should monetize his uh, business. So the unfortunate thing was that he eventually um, lost his business and had to liquidate his business. And that was very trying times in the Kravitz uh, household. And so I, I, I saw that. And it was uh, after that, soon after that, that I really wanted to dedicate my time and my efforts and my knowledge to try to help business owners get a much better outcome. Well, that certainly is a very important why, you know, seeing the the downside of not doing it really in, inspires you to help make sure others aren't in that same boat. Thank you for sharing that personal story. You're welcome. What exactly is exit planning? Well, um, I'm going to share my screen and I think this will uh, help explain that. Terrific. So uh, exit planning is business, is a business strategy. Um, what you're looking to do is you're looking to try to create harvest and preserve your family's wealth, not only for yourself as a business owner, but hopefully for many generations to come. I've seen that with many of the business owners that we've helped uh, sell their uh, sell their business, uh, multi-generational wealth. Um, and what they've done, what the successful ones have done has been focusing in on enterprise value. If you can focus in on that, that's where you have much, much better uh, outcomes. Uh, so you're looking for growth, and that's that's vitally important. And what you want to do is you don't do it singly. You don't do it by yourself, but you want to work as a team to create this. So as an example here, you can see this wheel here. And in this wheel, you have exit planning in the middle. but 
you're utilizing many different people that's going to help the business owner get that, uh, that great success. So in order to maximize the value of your, your business, you got to look to try to minimize taxes. So you'll need a tax expert there. Uh, but also, if, if the company is not at the value that you want to sell it at, there are certain value creators that you can do to try to help create that value. And a lot of uh, certified exit planning advisors do that is help uh, create the value. Um, and then you want to make sure that all your business issues are, are taken care of. Of course, you're going to need an attorney and make sure that your legal situation is, is up to snuff. And, and you're going to have personal situations. So you want to make sure that you have enough money to live comfortably uh, and make sure that all your financial issues are, are there. So there's a, a great quote by Richard Jackman, who co-founded Exit Planning Institute. And he defines exit planning as you want to maximize the value of the business at the time of exit, minimize taxes, ensure the owner is able to accomplish his or her personal financial goals in, in the process. So I think that that's probably the best way to, to explain uh, exit planning. That is a great way to explain it. You know, it's also a lot of players involved. <laughs> Do you assist your clients in, in bringing together really this kind of A-team for them to move forward with their exit strategy? Yeah, a lot of times I, I kind of look at it as either the quarterback or maybe the GM as someone comes to you. A lot of times business owners, this is the first time that they're doing it and they've never done it before. And, you know, we've had some good success with, with many other business owners. So we're trying to give them a good perspective and perhaps they don't have the right accountant or they don't have the right business uh, attorney, or they need evaluation. So there's many different people that uh, help. I like to say that it takes a village to sell the company. So you know, we we act uh, sometimes as a as a as a GM there. I think it's also kind of a peace of mind knowing that there's somebody putting all the pieces together, making sure that ev nothing is missed in this transition and in this exit strategy. Very important. You know, when we've talked before, you've talked about the three legs of a stool, which I think is a great way to talk about exit planning. Can you share that with us? Absolutely. I'm going to go back, back to the screen here. Great. So if you could have these, if you can take care of these three legs of the stool, and I'll, I'll explain what they are. They are, one, you want to maximize the value of your business. Two, you want to personally um, be prepared financially. And three, you want to ensure that you have a plan for the third act of your life. So let me explain in a little bit more details here. First, let's take a look at the business. You want to do a business valuation. So you want to make sure you know or you get a good understanding of what the value of, of your business is. And there's many different ways and places and things. We'll talk more about business valuations a little bit later. Um, and that might give you an idea of what the health, the financial health of your company is. And should you want to grow the company, should you not be ready, a lot of the certified exit planning advisors or people can help you do what's called 90-day sprints. So you have different areas of the business that you want to correct. You do that in 90-day sprints. You don't put all the list of things that need to be correct and try to do it all at once. You take one thing at a time. You do a 90-day sprint. You finish it. Go to the next 90-day sprint. Then the next one, the next one. And soon you're creating great value uh, for the company. Another thing you have to be very aware of as a business owner that the business owner is not too involved in the company. So I was talking to a business owner um, a few years ago and he was doing great, making a lot of money and uh, his revenue was, uh, was $50 million. And he's thinking, oh, you know, I'll just sell this company for one-time revenue, I'll, I'll get $50 million. And after looking at the company, he said, you know, what do you think the value is? And I said, you really don't have much of a value. And he was taken aback, he goes, how, how could I, how could I not have? Uh, how could I not have that much of a value? And I said, okay. So, let me ask you a question. Who's your top salesperson? Oh, that's me. I, I'm out there. I'm doing all the selling. Okay, great. Who's doing all your financials? All your financial work? Well, it's me. I, you know, I, I do all the financials. Okay. 
who's running the company? Who's running the company? I'm running the company. And meanwhile, the business owner was doing everything. I said, hey, when's the last time you took two weeks off? Two weeks off? Are you crazy? I can't take two weeks off. I said, well, until you can leave your business for three months, six months, until you can leave your business at least for two weeks, you don't really have a business. So you can't have all that relying on on one person. Because if you think about it, if someone's buying your business and you're leaving, okay, that's it. The business is leaving with, with you. So you have to think in, in those terms. So let me go back to, uh, uh, to sharing the screen. That's a really good point. You know, I think people have to analyze, you know, how much are they doing and start weaning themselves off. Correct. That's, and that's a, that's a big thing. And it's very, very difficult for someone that might be doing the same thing for decades. It's a, it's a very difficult thing. It's worked for them. I mean, like, like this example here, this gentleman has, quote unquote, a $50 million business and it's worked. So now you have to find a way to make it work without that, without you. Right. I mean, God forbid what happens if something happened to him. There goes, there goes the business. Mm -hmm. another, another thing with the business that you have to consider is predictability of your earnings. How predictable is, is your earnings? If you have a great year one year and a bad year the next year, you know, that, that might not be as palatable to, to a buyer. Um, you have to look at your personnel and your management. Uh, and then what is your succession plan? So we just talked about the business owner that was there and doing everything. Got to make sure that there's a succession plan. Whoever's buying the company uh, will, will probably, probably be looking there. You want to make sure that all your systems are, are in place uh, and also risk management. If there's a lawsuit or there's things out on the company, don't try to hide it. Don't hide anything. People, the buyers, there's professional buyers that are, that are out there that will We'll find it. So that's not all the business considerations. That that's just some of it. So that's one leg of the stool. Another leg of the stool is your financial considerations. So first and foremost, you need a financial plan. You need to know how much money do you need so that you can live comfortably for the rest of your life. Everybody has that number. You need to know what your your number is. Um, you also got to look at what income requirements there are. So we've been very successful with people that have sold their business. We have models in place where we can help replace that income. Because one of the things that's in the, on the mind of a business owner is, okay, I know where I was getting my money when I was uh, running my business, but how am I going to make my money after? So we have some great models in place that we've had. So income requirements and, and, and getting income after you sell is, is a very um, important thing. Um, you have to look at insurance and, and risks. Got to look at what your personal wealth is. You want to make sure, as I mentioned before, that you have security in retirement. And then, of course, estate planning. So there are definitely things that you can do prior to selling your business to enhance the wealth and keep that wealth uh, with you. So that's the second leg of the stool. And that doesn't just end there. There's a lot of other intricacies in there, but I wanted to give kind of an overview here of the three legs. And then the third leg of the stool is your personal considerations. And a lot of times I think that the failure of business owners comes right here. They're not prepared emotionally. They're not prepared for the next part of their life. So you want to talk about things with your family and friends. And quite frankly, for some business owners, their self-worth, their identity is with the business owner. So they might belong to a club. They might belong somewhere or they go to a religious place, a temple or something. And they say, oh, yeah, there's, uh, there's the builder. That person builds homes. So there's the builder, right? Or they own an automobile dealership. Oh, there's the dealer, dealership person. So they're identified with that. And then all of a sudden they sell and they might feel that they lack an identity there. So that's, that's another reason that people actually don't sell because they're identified with their business. And what we see often after um, the sale of the business is that they're looking uh, to be more philanthropic. And a lot of it depends upon their health. So health is a very, very important thing. So you want to make sure that, that you're healthy, you have fun uh, upon uh, you know, your next phase, and 
then of course religion and your beliefs and uh, things like that uh, come come into play. So um, it doesn't it's not it doesn't end there, but uh, that's that's part of uh, what the gives you an overview of the three legs of the stool. And if you can get those three legs of the stool correct proper, you're going to do great. You're going to do fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it all really comes down to planning. You know, planning all those different pieces so that when it's time, you can get out and, and be able to enjoy your life um, financially, emotionally, in all those different ways. So obviously you're talking about a lot of this about the pre-planning and getting the team together. What happens if I don't pre-plan? Okay. Great question. Um, so there was a top accounting firm 12 months after selling, they found that three out of four business owners surveyed profoundly regretted the decision wow. to sell their company, 75%. Yeah. And the reason was that third leg of the stool. When they analyzed and looked into it a little deeper, they weren't prepared. They weren't ready. So a lot of people that I, I talk to, um, when we talk, I talk about thinking about after you sell. What are you going to do? Think about that. Um, I tell them to go to a park bench, go somewhere away from everything else, close your eyes, think about what you're going to do. Most of these people are so wrapped up in their business, so wrapped up in the family, so wrapped up in things, they're not thinking about what the next phase is. So go there, go do that. It's a great suggestion. Uh, a lot of people have done that and, and have succeeded there. Um, also, you have to look at it if it's um, from a family standpoint. Uh, you have to be prepared. A lot of uh, a lot of families out there are not prepared, not ready to go to the next generation. So, uh, little Charlie or little Jane uh, were ready to take over the business. That's all they talked about. The parents talked about, oh, you're going to be taking over the farm, or you can take over the business. And little Jane and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not prepared. Maybe Jane wanted to be a rock singer. I don't know. They, they wanted to do something else. But it's always talked about by the family. And no surprise, all of a sudden, Jane or, or the son takes, takes over, and all of a sudden, the business goes, goes down. So we encourage our families to have these good conversations. We've had these conversations together with, with the family. Um, and a lot of times they don't they don't talk about it. It's it's amazing. They just talk about how oh Yo, you're going to come and you can take over the business. You can take over the business. Take over the business. Quite frankly, the kids in, in a lot of cases don't really want to take over the business. And I'll tell you a true story what happened with with my my dad. So we talked about there was no exit plan. So my dad did come to me, and he was in the button business. Um, he was what's called a jobber. He was in the button business, and he came to me says, "Do you want to?" you know, come in and take over the business. There was no way, absolutely no way I wanted to be in the button business. Are you kidding me? The heck do I know about buttons, right? So, you know, he came to me, I said, no, but, you know, again, he didn't prepare. He didn't, you know, there was no one else I wanted to take over the business. He did not prepare and and he had a, had a bad exit. So it's good to talk to the kids. It's good to ask them those questions, especially in the family. And talk to them, but also train them. I mean, you know, if little Jane hasn't been working the business and learning the business from the ground up or, you know, understanding the business, then, you know, even if little Jane loves the business, you know, you, you want to ensure that it's going to be successful. You need someone who really knows how to run the business. So, um, you know, I'm sure that's a piece of it too, that if, within a family, the assumption is to pass the business on is to make sure that person is really ready to be at go when the time is necessary. And and, and don't get me wrong, there's businesses, uh, I know one business that's on the fifth generation. So, you know, there are businesses that do the training, that do the right thing, that bring the next generation along. They start from the lowest end and then they work their way up and, you know, and they fight their way up. So, you know, there's, there's good ways and bad ways of, of, uh, of doing it. But I think conversation is, is a very, very important uh, thing. True, deep conversation, not, not just on the, on the surface, that's not going to work. Deep 
level conversations and really get into it and see what the what the next generation wants to do if they really want to be in, in the business. But is that's that good point. Part, is that part of an exit strategy? You know, passing the business on to the next generation. Is that you know? Oh yeah. Considered so that's another part of an exit strategy that you really assist people with and ensure sure. that they're asking the right questions and and doing the right things to set up for success with that. And and also, you know, in, in the one that's the fifth generation, um, in that in that case, the East the son got an attorney, the father got an attorney. They they did it all professionally as if it was a a, a business transaction. So it was all in the up and up. And I think that when they took it seriously like that, that it was a business transaction, um, I think that's one of the reasons why it worked out uh, so well. Mm. But also the planning, you know, working with you to develop a plan and making sure all those pieces, all the legs to the chair stool are in place too, to be able to do that. Sure. I've heard often about value versus income companies. Can you share the difference? Sure. Next, uh, I'm gonna, I'll share the, uh, uh, the screen again here. Terrific. Okay. So uh, income versus value. An owner could be leaving a lot of money on the table if they don't focus on the value of the company uh, and they only focus on the income. Um, and income doesn't always translate to value. And a lot of businesses are not saleable because they concentrate on income, all right? So those are the, the three bullet points there, but let me explain the difference. Mm -hmm. So you might have a company that, um, I'll just use an easy example. Let's just say you have a, a pizzeria and that pizzeria is creating income and the owner is taking that income and buying a house, the, taking that income, buying a yacht or buying a boat, taking that income, buying things and, and taking that income and using that income to, to live, not really taking that income and maybe putting some money away for a rainy day, but just taking that income, taking that income, taking the income, not taking the income and putting it back into the company. So that person lives a wonderful lifestyle, can afford a boat, can afford different things. But now that same business owner wants to sell that business. And that business, you know, it's a pizza place and maybe, you know, they might be get be able to get something, but not a lot of money out of that out of that business. Take a, a second person. Let's say this person has a similar type of pizza place, but makes a decision that um, they're not going to start putting money into their pocket, but they're going to go and buy another pizza place, and then maybe a third pizza place. And their sauce is really good. And so now they bottle that sauce, like like Rayos, right? Rayos has their sauce, and now they take that sauce and they start selling it to um, uh, different uh, uh, places, and and you can get that sauce online. And and so all of a sudden, that person now has created a value company. They have multiple locations. Maybe they buy the real estate under that location. So now there's a value in the real estate, and they they're making a really good name for themselves. And now they can uh, license that name or 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 create more uh, pizzerias in, in other locations and, and they maybe they can do it in multiple states. So now you're creating a value and that company then can sell their company for a big multiple of what the value of that company is. So they've created value, they've created worth in their business and when they sell, they can get a very large number versus the person that's just creating income and taking that income there. So hopefully that gives a kind of a, uh, a good idea of the difference between value, uh, you know, an income company and, and a value company. So it, it sounds like it's good to think about exit, your exit strategy, even in the early stages of your business. Um, that, you know, as you're creating your business and once you know you have a business solidified, years and years before <laughs> even the exit would be beneficial to talk about, you know, what is that exit strategy? Because in the example of the pizzeria, um, you know, if he comes to you, the owner comes to you, you know, very soon they want to sell their business. It's hard to then create that, that scenario to be a value business. But if they, you know, get started thinking about it and planning it, 
right when the business was beginning, um, you can even get a, get ahead of it. So, you know, really great to think about about the planning at every stage of your business. Yeah, I mean, as you know, the old line, you want to begin with the end in mind. So if you can do that, it's not always easy with every business. Some businesses morph and change over over a period of time. But if you can begin with the end in mind, that that is very, very helpful. Great. So let's say someone does want to plan and, and they're meeting with you to talk about that. How long should should it should it take to get from, you know, what's the timeline to get from, you know, the planning to um, the closing of the exit? Okay, I'll share my screen again. So th this is this would be the best scenario. Of course, there's all different situations that happen. Uh, there might be a death, a divorce, a disagreement amongst the business owners. Uh, but outside of that, you know, just preparing for a exit can take anywhere from six months to a year. And then if your business is not ready and you want to put in, in those 90 day sprints and try to get that business ready and build value, that might take a year or more. Um, and if your business is large enough where you're going to an investment bank to utilize them and their services, you know, that sales process uh, could take a year. Um, and then once it's sold, there might be a transition period uh, as well, where the owner stays on, and that could be a year or more, depending upon what the um, actual uh, deal is. Uh, sometimes they have the per person staying on for a period of time. Uh, so, you know, total time there is three and a half years. I mean, that's 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 the ultimate. A lot of times, it's it's a lot shorter period of time, but you know, again, it depends upon the uh, uh, the situation. But that gives you uh, gives you an idea of 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 a timeline. Now, I'll also share this with you. So a lot of times is, is there a right time? You know, when, when, when should you exit a business? Um, so I'll, I'll explain what this timeline is. So this is a personal timeline. So what a person can do in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s might not be the same energy and the things that you can do in in the late 60s, 70s, and 80s. So a person's energy might, uh, might go down, uh, their um, health might, might go. So you can see here how, you know, maybe doing something in the late 50s and the 60s might be a good time. You also have a business cycle uh, and the business life cycle of a company that, that can go up and down. And, you know, not all businesses stay in business. Uh, there, there's a, uh, there was a study done by University of Washington that says in the next 10 years, the S&P 500, half the companies are going to be off the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 companies, which are huge companies, they can change your business uh, and middle market businesses can, can uh, change as well. So a business has a life cycle. And then there's private capital market timing. Uh, so the economy goes up and down as well. Uh, I think of a client of mine that uh, was preparing for a sale in 2019, uh, didn't have everything ready, and then the pandemic hit. And uh, his business, unfortunately, got hit pretty badly uh, by the, the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, he supplies uh, different things for building in the boroughs and Brooklyn and Queens and so on. And there was no building. There hasn't been any building or very little building happening there. And he saw his revenue uh, plummet. So he went from a, a very good multiple where in 2019 into beginning of 2020, his multiple would have been higher. Now the multiple has gone down because the business has gone down. So now he's got to wait years or he's got to wait a period of time for the cycle uh, to go back up before he'll be able to exit uh, and have a, a higher multiple. So, you know, there's an old saying, you want to strike when the iron is hot. So if you, your business is doing well, you're in the right time frame for uh, your age, and then the private uh, capital markets is, uh, is good, that could be uh, you know, a very good time to, to be able to, to exit.
Thank you for that. And there's also other things that it can affect timing. For example, you know, with the Biden tax plan going into an effect, um, you know, how does that impact the selling of your business? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of questions um, on what Biden is going to do. What I've seen in the marketplace is a pickup of uh, people that are looking to sell their business in anticipation of long-term capital gains going higher. Is that going to happen? Is that not going to happen? We'll, we'll see. But if capital gains goes higher and you're in the ability to sell your business this year versus when that happens, you could be saving yourself an excessive amount of money. So it's something that as a business owner who's preparing to, to sell, if you're preparing to sell in a relatively short period of time, what I mean relatively short period of time, between one and two years, it might be a good idea to at least look at it. Maybe you want to accelerate it because if the tax laws go through, if the there's an increase in capital gains, that could be a big hit to someone uh, selling a business. So that's, that's, a great, that's a great question. So these are just things that you should certainly keep in mind as you're planning your timing and thinking about your timing. And again, you know, these are the kind of things to discuss with someone like you where what are the things I need to think about? Because um, sure. I'm so focused on running our business that we're not thinking about some of those outside pieces that are going to affect an exit strategy. It's hard to sometimes focus on an exit strategy when you're so focused on on the running of the business. So. And, and, and that's a good point. And, that, and that's a very difficult thing also for the business owner. Once they make the decision to sell, then you're keeping it private from your employees. You have a, it, it takes a lot of work. There's a lot of effort. And so now you're distracted. So you're trying to run the business, but you also have the distraction of trying to sell the business and there's so much information and, and, and work that needs to be done there. So, um, you know, that's just, uh, just a heads up for business owners that never have gone through that either. It's a good test to make sure your business can run without you. That's, that's, that's a great point. Excellent yeah. point. Yeah. So if you start working on this and your business is faltering, put into place some things that can keep your business running without you. Sure. Thank you so much for this information. You've really taken a very complicated situation and topic and helped really bear it down to the most key essential uh, issues and things people should look out for. Um, we do have some great questions from our uh, attendees I'd love to ask. Um, Sam wanted to know, in terms of a professional services firm, like a staffing business, where the business has no real tangible assets and the revenue stream is really a series of one-off transactions. Um, how can someone like him create an exit strategy? Okay. And is it uh, possible for him to create an exit strategy? Well, in a, in a, in a staffing business, if you have uh, reliable sources uh, of referrals that are, so companies that are consistently uh, coming to you. So you've, you have a great reputation in, in the business and you have the same companies that keep coming to you, coming to you, coming to you for, for the business. All of a sudden there's uh, a reliability in, in the staffing uh, business. So if you have a buyer that, that, that comes in and you can show that you have, and, and, and I understand that there'll be times when, when from an economic standpoint, you know, business can go, there's an ebb and flow of business. But if you can show, hey, I got all these companies that rely on us to be able to uh, get them people, then then a buyer can come in and, and see, okay, well, maybe like last year, at the beginning of the year, there wasn't that much business to be done because, you know, the economy basically, you know, fell 30 something percent GDP. So, um, you know, you, you need to be able to show that to a, a buyer that you have this reliable sources of, of, of referrals. So perhaps if someone like Sam doesn't have 
that set up right now, that that could be a focus of his to be able to start creating these ongoing relationships with businesses so that they can, so that he can show that his business has that type of, that, that type of commitment. And and, 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 and if he has a process, if he has these companies and he has a process, that's something that's repeatable, then perhaps he can open up other uh, staffing businesses, not just in one location. So let's just say that he has one in Brooklyn and it works. Well, maybe you can go to Queens, maybe you can go to Manhattan, maybe you can go to new, different places in New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island. So you can open up or even go to other states. Maybe it ha- you know, it has some relationships in Florida. So uh, you want to make something that's repeatable, some kind of process that's repeatable. Um, and maybe the, you always want to see if there's something unique. So maybe that staffing business, instead of being a staffing business for everybody, if you can concentrate and niche out. So one of the keys is niching, if you get a niche business. So if you only uh, staff technology companies or you only staff one specific type of business, then you get known as the only company or the best company that's out there that can that can staff this style, this, this type of business. The more niche you get, uh, if you go an inch wide and a mile deep, then you're going to get known as that. And then that might be uh, an easier company to, to sell as well. Those are two great ideas, both, you know, a process that's repeatable across different locations, like, like the pizzeria uh, example you gave. Um, And then also a niche, you know, being very specific to people. I think, you know, often people think being specific, you miss out, but truly being specific can be a tremendous advantage. Right. If, if you, if you go out and, and you're, for everybody, then who are you? You're for no one, right? right? But if you if you niche out, if you if you're very very specific in, in your niches, then people you'll get known in that industry as as the person in that industry or the company in that industry, and then people go to you and they rely on you for that. Right, Thank and you. and that's not just staffing that that you know that kind of runs the gamut to to many other uh, industries as well. Good tip for many industries. Um, Roger wanted to know, what is a 1042 exchange and does it apply to what you're discussing? And are there other big picture tax strategies um, that you can share or touch upon, perhaps not dive deep right now, but um, things that maybe uh, those who are looking to exit businesses should think about? Okay, so um, with with a 10, 1042, um, you, you're you're replacing uh, property and you're placing capital gains. Um, there are uh, things like an ESOP plan, uh, which it's basically the company buying the I'm sorry the employees buying the company, and there are tax advantages to that. Now, in my career, we've only done one ESOP. Now, why is that? It's it's a pretty complex strategy. When it works, it's fantastic, and there's there's tax advantages uh, to that. Um, but the company uh, that is being bought needs to have great cash flow. So the company is uh, or the employees are borrowing money, so they need to pay that back. So you need to have the cash flow from the business to be able to pay that back. So you need to keep having great. Uh, reliable cash flow, but when it does work, then you know it can really be a um, you know a wonderful strategy. Great, thank you. Maureen wanted to know: Are you seeing a greater interest in people wanting to buy um, minority women business-owned firms? Um, I, I we are, there are there are um, some incentives. That are out there for women-owned owned businesses, um, and I'm not I'm not seeing in in the market. At least I haven't seen any great increase in it. Um, but there, uh, what I have seen is an increase in um, um, n- n- not women-owned businesses that are selling. I do see a little bit of an increase in, in women-owned businesses, but not. I, I don't. I want to say a, a huge increase, but not not sale. Of women-owned business, I haven't seen an increase in that. Okay, thank you. Shelley said the 1042 question inspired me to ask this question: 
When should the owner consider selling to employees? You spoke of ESOPS, but there are more options than that for selling to employees. Um, so I guess our question is when, when should an owner consider this? All right, so they, they should consider it um, when they're ready, one. So if they've done all their, their work, um, they might want to look at other options. Usually in the, those types of situations, because it's employee owned, uh, the amount of money that the employer or the business owner gets will be lower than if they go out uh, using an investment banker and they put it out to sale. Uh, usually you'll get a, a higher number. So, you know, it really depends upon the business owner, what they're looking to get at. I mean, a lot of business owners that are out there, they feel they've made a good money. They've had their employees help them over, over the years. They, they're not looking for the last dollar. So that might be a good opportunity, a good idea. But, you know, the business owner has got to be, got to be ready to sell that business. So, you know, it's, I'm not avoiding the question. It's really depends. It depends upon business owners. So what, what I do with business owners a lot of times is if a business owner is getting ready for a sale, I like to have that conversation. I like to be involved early on. Mm -hmm. I like to get into the business owner's head to see what do they want to accomplish. All business owners are not created equal. They're all going to do di something different. Some people want all the money that they can get. Uh, some some business owners, you know, want to make sure that their business has legs so that when they're gone, this business will keep going on and on and on for a long period of time. Uh, so, you know, some keep, want to keep it in, in their family. All business owners are different. So I like to get in at the beginning and, and kind of talk through and learn what their, what their goals are, what they want to do, and talk to them about what they're going to do after they, they finish, do some planning, some financial planning, make sure that they have enough money to live comfortably for the rest of their lives. And then you can get into some of these other uh, areas if it makes sense to, uh, you know, to look at, look at different things. Great, great. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's as personal as each business is are different people's goals and objectives. We have a question about valuation. Um, Chow wanted to know, you know, my company has been at a loss for a couple of years. You know, what is the guideline for the establishment of the selling price? And I think we have a few questions about, you know, how does one get a proper valuation for their company? Okay. Um, great, great question. And uh, something that I will offer uh, the people that's uh, on this uh, webinar, uh, we would do not for everybody, but we would do a complimentary evaluation uh, for you. So we have a uh, service um, that uh, can take a look at your business, the type of business that you are, where you're located, and get a kind of a back of the envelope number. This is not a, a number that you'll use to go to the marketplace with, but at least it'll give you some idea uh, of of that valuation, so uh, for that person that asked that question, we can uh, we can help there. Now, if you want to get a professional um, business valuation, there's some great business valuators that we utilize, and they'll give you a professional, true business valuation. We're doing one uh, right now uh, for a company where the kids uh, are taking over the company, so the um, the matriarch and the patriarch of the family are selling the business to the next generation. They're using the business valuation as the number to utilize to, to sell. So that, that we didn't do, that's a professional business valuation. So when you're looking to do something like that, you want to use a professional business valuation. But if you're interested just to get kind of a back of the envelope number, we'd, uh, we'd be more than happy to, to help in most cases. Mark, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Okay, so there's a, there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, you can go, uh, you can see Align Wealth, A-L-I-N-E. So go on to the website, alignwealth.com. You can send a personal email to me. It's M Kravitz, K-R-A-V is in Victor, I-E-T-Z, at alignwealth.com. I also have a podcast. Uh, I interview business owners that have gone through successful um, 
exits and other people that are in the industry that help business owners go through these exits. And it's called Find Your Exit. And you can get that on iTunes or wherever you get your uh, podcast. Um, in addition, uh, we also, on a monthly basis, I have something called Coffee with Crav. I'll do a little promotion here, Coffee with Crav, uh, where I talk to different people at different walks of life. It's it's a bit private. So again, if you want to uh, listen to Coffee with Crav, email uh, us or go on alignwealth.com. We'll, we'll put you on the mailing list for that. And we also have monthly uh, newsletters as well that we can put you on uh, the email list as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for all this information. I actually put that in the chat. Um, the website, Mark's email address, his podcast, and the Coffee with Crab, which is fantastic. And I will also email this to everyone tomorrow. You'll have all of Mark's contact information um, so that he can support you in your business and your next steps. And as I mentioned, this uh, has been recorded and you will be able to get the edited version of it. It'll be on the Schnapps Media YouTube channel. We'll also email you the link so that you can go ahead and watch again. You can also share it with anyone who missed it because this is tremendously valuable, honestly, for anyone who's at any stage in their business to at least, as you said, begin with the with the end in mind. We're having a lot of thank yous. Uh, thank you from Patricia, very informative. Thank you from Howard. I wanna thank you, Mark, for being so generous with your information and helping us really understand the importance of exit planning and, and how to go about it. So thank you so much, Mark. And I wanna thank you all of our attendees for joining us this morning into afternoon. And, um, Looking forward to seeing you on a future webinar, but please reach out to Mark. Um, we have some more, more, more questions people want to answer. You reach out to Mark and he'll be able to help you specifically. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>